On today's show, it's Friday. It is the preseason for the Atlanta Hawks, and I am joined by Lauren Williams, the AJC beat writer for the Hawks, who covers the team year-round. We'll get into kind of a vibe check, a season outlook, and much more. All that is coming up. You are Locked On Hawks, your daily Atlanta Hawks podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Hello, friends. Welcome to episode 1816 of the Locked on Hawks podcast. I am your host, Brad Roland, coming to you on a Thursday evening, deep into the night into Friday. And today's podcast is brought to you by the folks at FanDuel Sportsbook. You can begin the season right now with a big return at FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. I also want to tell you at the top of the podcast, as I always do on the show, to make us your first listen each and every day here at Locked on Hawks. Check us out and subscribe to the podcast anywhere you find your podcasts. We're on Apple, we're on Spotify, we're on Amazon Music, we're also on YouTube. Please like this podcast if you are watching it on this episode, and uh, please subscribe and comment, all that fun stuff on YouTube to support the podcast. I am joined in a second by Lauren Williams at the AJC. She is the Hawks beat writer, has been for the last couple of years, covers the team year-round, travels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I want to do a little bit of a vibe check with her before the actually things ramp up a little bit. We recorded this podcast in the slot that was supposed to be a Hawks game before it was postponed to next week. If you missed it. I did a full-blown, usual deep dive breakdown into the game on Tuesday, which was the opener for the Hawks, and then sort of a follow-up episode that I recorded Wednesday night in mailbag fashion. Talked about Jalen Johnson, Zachary Shea, Kobe Bufkin, etc. Plenty to discuss. We'll also have more later on this weekend. At least that's the plan. More over-under talk with Robbie Calland. The season is here. The Hawks play three games next week, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So we are certainly in the throes now of the full-blown season mode on this podcast so please go ahead and subscribe to the show tell your friends without any further delay we'll dive in now with myself and lauren i am joined on today's podcast by a special guest it's lauren williams at the ajc lauren how are you i'm good thanks for having me on bradley <laughs> this, this, is, this is take two for people that don't know uh, and you wouldn't know uh i had a rare weird production thing and lauren's being very patient with me uh here we are we're talking about the atlanta hawks we've seen one game of the preseason we've mm -hmm. seen some training camp at least you have we were at media day together i'll start here yeah. uh before we dive into basketball and we will do that yeah I want to I want to get a vibe check from you because yeah. people ask me people ask me and I always admit like when I'm around the team when I'm not like I I'm not I'm not there every day like you are uh, people want to know what the vibes are like because <laughs> I, what they what, what they have seen and you've mm -hmm. been there too like mm -hmm. what's been released from media day or press conferences mm -hmm. like it feels like everybody's really happy yeah is that the vibe you're getting around the team right now it's definitely the vibe that I'm getting honestly as cliche as this sounds vibes have been good. Just a lot of positive energy. Um, and that's not to say that, you know, this isn't normal for the beginning of the season. I feel like it's kind of a thing that everybody has a positive outlook and then the reality hits and and things kind of, you know, change a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see how this group is able to kind of translate the good vibes that they've had in training camp into the regular season. But things have been good. I think Everything that people have been seeing, you know, that's been put out on social media, that's been, as you said, we've seen on media day, you know, with people teasing each other when they're on the podium. I think it's, I think it's the real deal. Um, and so I think people are getting, they're seeing what they're getting or they're getting what they're seeing. Uh, <laughs> one, of those I, things. <laughs> one of those things. So I think everybody <laughs> understands what I'm trying to say. I think, I think the vibes are good. Uh, we're all feeling it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it feels like, and you've covered different teams too. Mm -hmm. I have covered the Hawks for a long time. Mm -hmm. Everyone's vibes are better at the beginning of the season. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to guard against being too far in this realm, especially, yep. you know, me, my, my makeup is not like, all right, <laughs> vibes, but it does feel a little bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's because, you know, they did, they didn't overhaul the roster, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a little bit different. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's no more DeJounte and Trey stuff. That's not there anymore. Right. They're, they're younger now than they've been. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're upbeat. You bring in the number one overall pick, and we'll talk about like it seems like it's it is objectively leaning more there, even if I could probably say the same thing about like the wizards who are bad. You know, there are yeah. bad teams that have good vibes in October, but and you gotta win games. We all understand yeah. that. But until they start losing, it, it feels like it's real to me. I don't know. I, I agree, and I think 
it's it's still very early in the season, obviously, but I think a big part of that is having a guy like Larry Nance Jr. in the locker room. And, you know, from the people that I've spoken to who covered the Pelicans, um, he's just a he's a vibes guy. I mean, he's a good yep. player. He's a good player. There's no arguing that, but he just brings so much positive energy to this group. I mean, you've seen it from the videos that some of us have put out from practice where he's trash talking Onyeko Kongo. <laughs> and for people who might not know, Onyeko Kongo gives it just as good as he gets. Oh, yeah. So there's no bullying or anything or any offense needing to be taken or anything like that. But I remember, you know, I spoke to Onyeka at the Million Meal Pack back in, Oct you know, back at the beginning of the month or at the end of September, right before training camp. And he had such good things to say about Larry Nance. He was excited to have Larry in the locker room. And there's something to be said about a veteran on the team who can contribute to the good vibes, but is also contributing on the court. And I mm -hmm. think, you know, depending on how things shake out with Onyeka and how, you know, they've been ramping him up and everything, Larry Nance might be the backup five to start the season. Who knows? Um, but I think he's just a good guy to have. I mean, he might even be like the backup four for when Jalen yeah. needs to go to the bench. And so we might, if Onyeka is healthy and ready to go when the season starts, we will see some minutes with the two of them together. So, you know, he's such a positive, I think, influence on this locker room and i think we're, that's part of what we're seeing along with the influx of young players <laughs> that have been yeah. on the roster <laughs> yeah i mean one of the things that you know i'm sure you get asked too is like who's the locker room leader like what they don't have mm -hmm. old guys, you know because i i've kind of in somewhat amusingly referred to bogey and clint as the old guys they're not mm -hmm. that old they've just been older than the rest of these guys exactly and, but there's you know there's no vince carter there's no west mm -hmm. matthews like there's no like 38 40 year old on this team this year it's yeah what you got. like and larry nance to your point like it's not an old guy but he's been but in the league he for has 10 years that, exactly yeah. he has that sort of veteran old guy presence he's just you know he is who he is he's confident in who he is he's been around a lot of winning teams and so he knows what's expected of that yeah and one of the reasons like the, the cold analytical side of my brain is like mm -hmm. hey they could have traded larry nance already and mm -hmm. it wouldn't have stunned me you know like and it's not and i've been making sure to say larry nance is a good player and you said it mm -hmm. too i echo that 100 percent. it's just because he's, he's on an expiring contract he mm -hmm. was kind of a a salary he's matcher in the Dejounte trade, yeah. He's it's... heard a lot in New Orleans. It happens. Mm -hmm. So, so. It, if you look up in February, he's not on the team anymore. It won't because they don't like Larry Nance. It's just because yeah. he's expiring, and is what it's. That's kind of the, there's the business of the NBA, and mm -hmm. there's the vibes of the NBA, and exactly. he kind of checks all those, those boxes. boxes. <laughs> yeah, uh, but he is. I mean, you mentioned a Kongwu. I'm not going to ask you to report anything because we we know we've heard the same things. I think for the exactly. most part, yep. we don't really know what's going on with the Kongwu. Um, I just wanted to break that was on, a, on my list to bring up because yeah. I've been dutifully playing the audio for Quinn just to say, hey, guys, this is what we're getting from Quinn Snyder, which is a whole lot of nothing. Mm -hmm. I'll say that so you don't have to. Quinn's not really being revelatory about a Kongwu. He didn't play in the mm -hmm. opener. Mm -hmm. He's been doing more. I mean, I'll ask you this. What what you have seen in practice, he's been doing stuff like that. I've seen video, yeah. but yeah. Um, what's the what what's what are you thinking about? I'm not I'm not putting on the spot, but like, what do you think yeah. about how that's all going? It's just kind of weird right now. Yeah, because I'm I'm sure you know fans know that we only get to watch about fifteen percent, the very 15, end, <laughs> fifteen minutes yeah. of practice, and even then, it's like, can you really count it? It's fifteen minutes of practice because usually what we're watching is them shooting and yeah. getting free and that's throws. On, out. And that's not so people know this. That's on purpose. The, yeah. they, they have to let you in at the end of practice, but they try to do stuff that you that they actually want you to see. They don't want they, they don't want anybody to see anything that they are worried about. Seeing. <laughs> So. Well, sometimes we get to see some of the guys who may not get a lot of minutes. So like the two way yeah. guys, the college park guys, they might be doing some like light scrimmaging just because they're not getting a lot of minutes on game day or whatever. So that's as much as we get to see if we're seeing action, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But most of the times we're just watching shooting competitions, guys putting up shots. Maybe you get a little bit of one on one work with a coach um and seeing them play through contact and so some of that some of that's what i've been able to watch is you know seeing onyeka do some contact work you know with tony lang and epe Udo or um regis and i i'm not even going to try to butcher okay. his last name 
but he is yeah. one of the player development coaches. And so that's usually, you know, as much as I've gotten to see of Onyeko Kongu. Um, yeah. It hasn't been a lot. But from what I've heard, he's participated in practice. We just don't know the extent. And the other thing that I've heard is just a matter of for us wanting to see Onyeka play, we have to be patient. So <laughs> yeah, Quinn's you know? been saying that and he, you know, they talked about the <laughs> ramp up. Uh, our, our mutual friend, Caleb Johnson was the one that asked Quinn before the opener mm -hmm. about Onyeka. And I, I probably listened to Quinn's answer five times to figure out what he said. And it was, it was, it was nothing basically, but he has been doing stuff. And that's, I want everybody to know, like, we can hear things, but mm -hmm. this, is why, this is why we ask the question to mm -hmm. Landry or Onyeka or Quinn, because that's kind of all we can go on as far as like firmly in public understanding what's going on. Yes. He's doing stuff, but the lack of injury reports in the preseason, they don't, they, they have it not given difficult. And you know, this, they have not given a official update on anyone nope. to this point. Nope. And the last one on, on Onyeka was in April when he had yep. the procedure on his toe. That is six yep. months ago. <laughs> so yep. <laughs> we are flying blind on that one. Pretty hey, Seth much. Played, though. Seth, Seth played. Hey, hit a game winner. And Big I should ask you this. I, I think you were there because I listened to the audio. Um, Seth kind of said to the media, was it yesterday that he talked? Was that today? Yesterday or today? It was um, yesterday, but I actually left before Seth's. Spoke. Okay, so I, I heard it, but like yeah. he kind of said he wasn't 100% cleared. And I was like, but Seth, you played in the game. Like you, you were in, you were in uniform. So that was a weird it's, one too. I, I we don't know. Again, I get, I've gotten conflicting things because it's like, mm -hmm. I've heard that he's pretty much good to go, but then you have Landry, you know, saying that he's not necessarily a hundred percent cleared, but then he's playing at the end of the game. And, and then Seth game says winners. the same thing <laughs> <laughs> the next day or whatever it was. So, uh, that's just a little bit of a window. Like Lauren travels with the team. She's around the team more than I am. And still, I, it's not just me that gets this stuff. Lauren's getting the same. I get the run around. Run around yeah. Very much so. Um, I think my favorite thing is that they like to talk in riddles mm -hmm. and a lot of reading between the lines. Sometimes you'll get a clear answer if they're in a good mood. But yeah. most of the times it's consistent pestering. <laughs> That's right. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the best place to find tickets. There's nothing like checking out a live event, whether it is sports or music or theater or comedy. It's all there for you at Game Time. They also have a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets incredibly easy for you. They take out all the stuff that you actually don't need, filter it out, and only show you the incredible deals and great seats. They actually have no time to waste. I know I have no time to waste personally, and they make it easy for me to not waste any of that time at Game Time. For example of that, there are awesome deals all the time for the Hawks, but there's one for the season opener right now on October 23rd against Brooklyn, and that's a pair of tickets for $24 each, including fees at game time. That's an awesome deal, of course. There's more of that happening all the time. My personal favorite feature at game time is the ability to turn on a feature to view the seats in, through the all-in pricing tool, so there's no surprise fees if you had that turned on when you were getting through the app until the checkout screen, and you also view the seats that you're actually looking for in panoramic style in the app before you buy them. So you know exactly what you're actually going to be getting into when you get into the venue that you are buying tickets for. And you're getting the lowest possible price guaranteed with the folks at Game Time. Take all the guesswork out of buying tickets right now and do it with the folks at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create that account at Game Time, and that code is Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off. At game time, terms apply. Download the game time app today. What time is it? It's game time. We can change gears. I, I did want to ask mm -hmm. you about some some on court stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Let's start with Zachary because he he's topic number one right now yeah. uh, for obvious. He already was before Tuesday, and then it became overdrive was to he? that. <laughs> I mean, he was for some people. I, I know you've been asking about him. I mean, I'm sure that uh, I know you're. I know your editor. I'm sure he would like you to write about the number one overall pick in the draft. Yeah, like absolutely. Like secret that he's here, no. but also he's now. I would say much more in the conversation beyond the sickos. Like the mm -hmm. sickos already were on this, right? But mm -hmm. now that he had this big game in the first game, um, what have you seen from him as far as like basketball wise, and also yeah. if you want to inject the personality stuff because everybody seems to love the guy too, which is certainly helpful. Honestly, he is just one of the sweetest people, personality mm -hmm. just one of the sweetest people, mo you know, from a media perspective, of course, we love talking to people who love, well, maybe not love talking to us, but understand the nature yeah. that it's part of the job. And 
a, a big thing about this job is relationships. And obviously, the better the relationship, the better, you know, the media interactions are going to be. And I can say that I've just come away from almost every single uh, interaction that I've had with Zachary just feeling nothing but positivity. And that clearly kind of translates onto the court because he is so poised. He's so confident. And I think that really shone through in that preseason debut. I mean, 18 points. He was hitting Euro steps, hitting threes, slamming down dunks. But between the leg passes, I think for me, as early right now as it is, that's probably his most underrated part of his game, in my opinion, is his passing. I don't think we were sold as highly on how good of a passer he is because there's almost, I know that, you know, Clint had to do a little bit of work to kind of corral <laughs> that between the leg pass. But I mean, it uh, with anybody else, do you think that they would have made that, that layup? I mean, it's, he he's good. He's going to be yeah. good. And uh, I mean, Clint and Quinn and Trey, they all say it. He's going to have ups and downs because he's only 19. He's very young. But the fact that he's as poised as he is at 19 bodes pretty well, I think, for the rest of his career. And just hearing about how he takes care of his body, you know, hiring a chef for his mm -hmm. own place. Um, he's gained 20 pounds since, you know, the, the pre-draft stuff like the combine and everything going from what 194 to 215 on the training camp roster that's huge um obviously he'll full out fill out more as he gets older but i mean the fact that he's committed to already like adding some weight and has done so in such a short amount of time um and is still able to have that pop that athleticism still can move laterally well um his defense, I thought, was pretty solid. Obviously, a rookie, he's going to have some missed assignments. Um, but I think if he ha continues to have guys around him like Dyson, who's an elite defender, you have a guy like uh, Clint Capella who kind of quarterbacks the Hawks defense. I know that's I know Clint Capella is kind of a controversial <laughs> <laughs> person, but his his value on the court cannot be understated because he is the main communicator for the team on defense. And without him, we saw it last year. Without DeAndre Hunter, they 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 suffered a little bit. Mm -hmm. So if he's surrounded by some of these guys who have some really solid defensive instincts, I think we'll see that sort of uptick. But offensively, I think I was very impressed with him. Obviously, as he faces more elite defenders, bigger defenders, he's going to have to figure out how to adjust. But to play that Pacers team with most of its starting rotation at the beginning of that game, and he's contributing as much as he was yeah pretty good pretty pretty good yeah they're, they're throwing him in the deep end too i mean the guys yeah. that uh sometimes I, I pay attention to the guys i, I won't name names but people that are not always going to be effusive of, of praise mm -hmm. to their teammates necessarily mm -hmm. when they're going kind of going out of their way to talk about yes Zach, it yes. stood out to me that yeah. like pretty much everyone and look there's everyone a baseline has, everyone has no something positive yeah. to say Right. And no one's going to kill him anyway. We understand right. that. But there, there's there's a difference between saying the perfunctory thing mm -hmm. and being like, no, this guy's for real. And yep. like, so Jalen, so Jalen, Jalen today, mm -hmm. Jalen's not exactly the most effusive guy. Like, it's mm -hmm. not the way he does things. And he was like, very like, hey, this guy's, this guy's legit. So that's, yeah. that's just something to me. That's just one example. I think the other thing that really speaks to me is how much they want him to shoot the ball. Oh, yeah. They, they have been like, he can shoot it. He can like so the fact that they have just built so much confidence in him to like just let it fly. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna contribute. Yeah, I mean he's gonna play a lot. I, I did the whole thing yesterday. Like, there's this whole conversation that I'm sure people are gonna have about him starting it or not. And mm -hmm. we've been asking. I, I know you've I know you've asked around it. Like <laughs> you're, you're doing your job on that. You're not gonna tell us. But like whether he starts or not, I don't I don't particularly I don't particularly care. I know fans yeah. do. It's fine. Eventually he will. You know, mm -hmm. if he's as good as I think he's going to be, it won't be that long before he's starting. I'll say that. And that's long. that's kind of that's kind of the boat that I'm I've been in. I don't necessarily think there's a huge benefit to him necessarily starting right away. Could he do it? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. But if you don't have a reason to, why force the issue? Um, I think if it comes to a point where 
you see him closing out games far more than some other people, then maybe you raise the question of why isn't he in the starting lineup? But as it stands right now, I don't think there's a reason that you should be forcing him if you can give him a little bit more time to kind of read the speed of the NBA game, get comfortable. And yeah, I mean, again, could he start? Sure. But why should he if he doesn't have to? They also, and they won't do this because Quinn just won't answer us. But mm-hmm. if he wanted to give the comparison, he could just point to Bogey and be like, hey, Bogey's like our third best player. He hasn't started. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't say that, but you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, they do have, this is a team that is, that is, that is not always started its best five players. So that's been, yep. and, and I think you can disagree with that, but that's, that's yep. been the reality. I was going to say too, I think the big thing that Quinn has done, uh, uh, I guess if you're reading between the lines of what he said, and even you don't even have to really read between the lines because he said it, he is far more uh, focused on who closes out games than who Mm -hmm. starts games. It's, you know, it's, it's all about who finishes it out. And you saw it last year with Onyeko Kongu versus Clint. I think that was the big one. So I think if we're seeing Zach closing out the games far more frequently than yeah, I, I and I've said this too to a couple of people, you know, kind of offline where I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, we see Zach as a starter after the trade deadline, maybe yeah. before that. Makes sense you know? to me. I mean, yeah. at some point they're going to some point they're going to do it. They're obviously incredibly invested in him. Mm-hmm. They took him number one overall. That that says a lot in itself, and everybody is all in. So uh, it's a matter of time. But yeah, I'm not worried. I, I think he looked great on Tuesday. We'll see mm-hmm. how Monday looks. But uh, just wanted to at least check in because it feels like that's a big story. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, and basketball is now here, of course, in full force, plus football and everything else going on. Begin the season right with a big return at FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook, and right now you can find a lot of different information sets at FanDuel from the latest stats to live play-by-play and so much more on the same page where you can place your bets at FanDuel Sportsbook. You also can start with a great offer from FanDuel right now, and that's $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet at FanDuel. You should also know right now that the app at FanDuel Sportsbook is really easy to use. They have everything that you need across the sports betting space from over-unders to point spreads to money lines, player props, future bets, live betting, um, same-game parlays, and so much more. The app is safe. It's secure. They cover the entire range of sports as well. NBA is at the forefront, of course, on this podcast. WNBA, NFL, college football, MLB. They have golf and tennis, they have hockey, they have soccer, auto racing, boxing, MMA, and so much more. And now is an awesome time to sign up with the folks at FanDuel Sportsbook. The place to go is FanDuel.com to get started. You get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. One more time, visit FanDuel.com and check out America's number one sportsbook. One other thing I wanted to get to, um, not necessarily <laughs> related to Zach, but yeah. it's kind of because uh, people noticed, I'm sure you got asked this too, about how much time Trey and Zach were spending together uh, leading up, like lots of public appearances of Trey and yeah. Zach together. Um, it seems like, and actually I, I meant to pull the exact question I got. Somebody asked me and I was like, you know what? I'm going to hold this up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to present it to Laura on the podcast um, about Trey because yeah. going back to the vibes, Trey seems like he's in a pretty good place. He really and- likes Zach is what I feel. You don't bring a, uh, a guy you don't like to your place in Oklahoma, right? If right. you don't like them. And that's that's one thing. And also, like, you know, Trey has matured. And I, I've mm-hmm. been covering this the beginning. Like, he's gotten a lot more comfortable with the media, which is not yep. the biggest part of his job, but it matters. And he's it more does. comfortable. Yep. And he's matured and all those things. Mm-hmm. But also, there's this is the first summer that it was, like, kind of uncertain. Like, is, is this Trey's team or not? And mm-hmm. that's it. It's like for the first time in his career, this is actually a question that's been asked the last six months or whatever. Mm-hmm. And right now it's still his team. Like he's the best player on the team. We all understand that, but it's kind of a, I've been framing it as a pretty big learning season for the Hawks as a whole, mm-hmm. but also for Trey. Um, mm-hmm. Does he sign an extension next summer? Like all these things are going to come up and come in, come into play. And it's going to come yeah. to how, how this goes. But uh, it feels to me like he's bought in. Do you, does, do you have, do you get that sense that I get? Yeah. Like, he's, pretty, he's pretty well bought in right now with what I, I, I definitely agree. I mean, you see him shouting out teammates. You see him shouting out Jalen Johnson. We knew that they had built a certain amount of chemistry, a certain level of chemistry that was positive for the team. We saw it on Tuesday night with that alley dunk that, you know, we Jalen was just flying all over the place. Um, and I, I think that 
you know, Trey's invested in building chemistry with Zachary. Uh, and we saw it a little bit before where he made the joke about Anthony Edwards should have been here as a number one pick. I mean, <laughs> if, if you're not embrace, I think he realized if, if you don't embrace the number one pick that comes to your team, it's going to look a little odd. Right. On that, on that point, did, I'm sure you heard this too. What, did you see the conspiracy theories this summer when he wasn't like on social media, like going yeah. crazy about uh, Dyson or Zach or whatever? Like, yeah. Trey was kind of quiet on the Hawks front, social yeah. media wise, for about a month, and people were freaking out. And he's a family man. Right, That's I what really I care about that. It. But it was yeah. like one of those things. <laughs> and I wanted to make sure we fly because when, when you brought that up, yeah. I'm like, yeah, he did, he didn't do the whole like, hey man, welcome to town. But yeah. he did it behind the scenes. Like he didn't have to do it on social media. He didn't mm-hmm. do that. But clearly they've built a rapport. Like I'm not saying mm-hmm. we're not best friends after three months, but like they're clearly, I think he's pretty clearly invested in mm-hmm. Jalen too. Like Jalen's obviously a big part of this as I'll probably ask about Jalen too, but Jalen is like clearly the guy on the team beyond yep. Trey and Zach. Yep. It's like the core piece for them. Yep. And the three of them, I mean, the best they version seem of to have Hawks. a good relationship so far. Yeah. It's only been three months though. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, it's early. <laughs> it's still so early. And I think, you know, They talk a lot. You talk a lot about what happens during the season. And I think that's where you really can start to, you know, pay attention to how relationships shift and change and who's hanging out with more and and things like that. Because winning does cure all and losing can really rip apart a locker room. And we saw that a little bit. Last year, I'm sure you heard some of the things that were coming out of the locker room that yep. wasn't great. Um, and so it's just it's just so early to tell, but by and large, again, vibes are good. Right. Um, and I think it's great that tr- we're seeing Trey mature and, and is invested in taking people under his wing. And I think one big thing that actually stuck stuck out to me that he mentioned at Media Day when we were asking about Dyson um he was like it's my job to help make him better Mm -hmm. and i think that's a huge step that we've heard from from trey i i in the the two years three years that i've been covering the team i've never really heard him you know align himself like oh i'm i'm the guy that can help somebody get better and i think we started to see it a little bit last year and then now we're really kind of seeing him mature a lot more. I wonder how much that has to do with him, you know, being a father of two now versus the father of one and um, things like that. I don't know. Yeah. And like to the mature, I don't want to overdo it. Like, but mm-hmm. he's, he's grown up. Like he, he was, he wasn't a kid when he got here, but he was 19 years old. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's just different when you're 19 versus when you're 26, 27, like that's mm-hmm. what it's going to be. And he's the face, he's the face of the team. I know they just drafted Risha Shea. Maybe, maybe Zach will be in a couple of years. Maybe it'll be Jalen, but right now it's still Trey. It's Trey's and team. It's still Trey's team. And if I think that him being a little bit more in that way of like, you know, last year, I, don't, I know you noticed this too. We, we talked about mm-hmm. it, but he, he took some onus in after games, like that he wouldn't have taken yep. when he was younger. Like yep. I, there were times when he was like a second year guy. I'm like, Hey, Trey, you probably should have owned that one a little bit more. And he didn't. Yeah. And now, now he does that more, which mm-hmm. is, it's a, it's a small thing, but it can kind of tell your teammates too. Like, Hey, I'm, I'm here with you. I'm, it's not just me and you, like we're, we're kind of together on this thing. Absolutely. I think that was one of the, the biggest pleasant surprises that I had last season was when he just took accountability for so much more and saying, I got to be better, but you know, beyond just, I got to be better. He was giving specific examples of what he needed to improve on. So it's a, it's, it's a big, it's big, it's small, but it's big. (laughs) It's big. Uh, I'm not going to keep it very long. Laura, just for everybody knows, Laura threw me a favor and recording this during the Tigers game and she's a Tigers fan. So shouts to you for doing that. I'm gonna get you out of here. But, <laughs> there, uh, for those who don't know, it's currently tied at one-one. I think it, it's go. going into the bottom of the third or the fourth. She's, do, she's doing good, not watching TV. <laughs> while she's talking to me. Well, she is. She's not. She's not uh, revealing that to me. But okay, before we go, um, I won't ask you to give a prediction because it's not really what your job is. But does mm-hmm. this feel like a team? Because I, I, I'll just make it as broad as possible. I, mm-hmm. I think this team is more than capable, in fact, I'm, I'm projecting it, to be better than last year, which is not what people necessarily are thinking because they lost to Jante. We, we mm-hmm. all know what happened there. But it feels to me like they are capable or or even more of that. You can you can speak to that. And I also want to know if you, if you think anything about this because you'll never get Quinn or Landry to be like, this is what we think they're going to be. Right. They're, they're never going to give us that. 
I wonder if you have any I sense. I tried about asking they, that on media. I know. And got nothing. I, know. <laughs> I wonder if you have any sense at all about not even just them, but like organizationally, like what's yeah. going to be successful for like that's a question I get all the time is on these previews. It's like what's successful for the Hawks? I'm like it's kind of weird because it's kind of a learning season. Yeah. And it was, but what about wins? Is I'm like okay, if they win more than last year, that's success. I feel like if you want to just nail it down that far, but yeah, I'm also almost answering my. I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but it is one of those things where it's a very conflicting and not in a bad way. Mm -hmm. season where it's not just about like hey be the six seed it's about mm -hmm. like show growth and young player mm -hmm. and that's why i started with the young players because that's that's really the story of the year in my opinion i agree i think if we're going back to things that landry talked about on media day he highlighted a lot about the idea of internal growth <laughs> and that was yeah. that kind of started last season um and so i think that's a big thing is just does Kobe Buff can get better? Does Zachary get better? Um, and it's not even just the young guys. I don't think that that's internal development. I think it's just the team as a whole. Is there like tangible growth that you can see? I think if I'm throwing a prediction out there, and it's not even really a prediction. It's more so I think that if things swing the Hawks way, there's no reason why they can't be a six seed. But realistically i think their ceiling is seven seven in the east um yeah. just because when you look at the rest of the eastern conference finals or excuse me eastern conference they all got better with the addition of superstars with the addition of you know defensive stalwarts or adding um you know versatile pieces like the knicks did the the celtics yeah. were a deep team to begin with and they retained their top talent um, you know, Milwaukee for better or worse still has Giannis, and that's always going to get you, <laughs> you know, a certain number of wins. Um, and Cleveland, you know, even though they're still kind of a, a weird question mark with everything that's happening with Darius Garland, and um, you hear those things about them wanting to put the ball in Mobley's hands more. Um, <laughs> they're still a good team because they have a guy like Donovan Mitchell who's a proven closer. Um, and they also went to the Eastern Conference semifinals last year. So it's just, but, you know, the East has gotten so much more competitive than it's been, I think, you know, in the past. It's not necessarily as strong as the West, but it's still a very strong conference. And I, I don't know, it's just hard to think that you're sort of banking this team's playoff hopes on a 19-year-old and a 22-year-old you know, in your big three. Um, yeah. So I, I think if they, if they get to seven, I think that should be considered a success because that means that the team won. They had yeah. more wins, <laughs> Yeah. but everybody's developing on a certain timeline that hopefully, you know, next year when you have that Lakers pick, which it seems internally they're banking on, they are, um, yeah, they are intrigued by that pick for sure. <laughs> yeah, we're going to miss the Lakers all year long. We all understand that. <laughs> and then obviously that potential sack pick um, that you know could get conveyed. Yep. Um, you know, next year's draft class is much stronger than this past draft it, class. It it, it is. The, and the free agency class is also stronger <laughs> than this yeah. past free agency class. And so, they can create some stuff in like this way down the line, but like they there's some roster flexibility too. Like they don't have any disasters on their books. I know there's a couple of contracts they've made that and it, with true serum may not love, mm -hmm. but it's not like they're like total disasters either. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I it's hard, it's so hard to talk about this team like in a broad way like that because it everything it takes nuance. It's like, all right, mm -hmm. if they win if they win 36 games again, but they do it with Dyson and Zach and Jalen playing really well and Trey. Sig you know, signal he's going to be here long term, and all these mm -hmm. things. That's a success. Yeah. If they win forty games, but That's it's on success. the strength of like, but but it is. But also like, if it's because Bogey's going crazy and Bogey's thirty one years old, like, <laughs> there's di there's different ways of success for this team. I yeah. think this year is my my whole point there. But I feel like they can also have success without winning forty five games. Like it's. Very I awesome. I also think too the big thing is if they can stay healthy, which is always a huge. Oh yeah. If with this team and just the NBA in general, but if they can stay healthy, like you don't have any major injuries like you did with Jalen or Trey or Onyeka, 
I think that to me, that's also a success. You know, if you're oh, yeah. core, core guys can stay healthy. It would be helpful for everything. I mean, <laughs> right now, a Congo like you could debate about like where he is on their on their core, but they paid him long term. Like he's a guy they like, and mm-hmm. he's currently hurt. As we're talking, like he's he was not available to play on Monday. Mm-hmm. Like sorry, on Tuesday, we'll see if he plays on Monday. But yeah, uh, that's implied. But also, this I do think this I think you would agree too. This team is better suited to withstand some injuries than last year's team. When it just oh. got it got so dire so, so much, fast. Oh year. my gosh, so much more depth, but. Like- you said it's just it i think last year was just a slippery slope i think too when you have injuries just in general it's a slippery slope because guys are playing more their usage goes up that you're asking them to do things that maybe they weren't necessarily built to do or Mm -hmm. they trained to do um and so it def they definitely have a lot more depth i think uh, if a guy like Veet can continue to develop on sort of the path that he's been on um and you don't have to have that sort of quote unquote feeling out period that they had to have with him when he kind of filled in when Sadiq Bey went down last year. Um, that's that's not a bad spot to be in if he's kind of like your filler piece. Oh um, yeah, they love Veet. I, oh, I know they, love, they love Veet. I they think love we all love Veet. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all love Veet, but he wasn't necessarily filler last year because he did not start out strong. No, I mean I say that, you know this, but like. In the middle, of, like in like last season, like December, he was he was in the G League and not on an affiliate contract. He was just yeah. playing for the Iowa Wolves last year in mm-hmm. November, like not even on a two way, and suddenly ended up being this key piece that they paid and yep. paid not very much, but paid kept long term. So anyway, I'm gonna get you out of here. Thank you, That's Lauren, okay. <laughs> for being here. That's okay. Uh, it's always fun to pe- talk. Off people should Brad. know. People should know where you are already. But people that may, somehow don't, if they find us on YouTube or whatever, where can folks yeah. find all of your Hawks coverage? All well, your it should be down below if you're. It is there on, on Twitter slash um, X. Yes, it's it's uh, Williams Lauren L on Twitter, and then you can find all my work at the AJC.com. or be nice and get the paper delivered, like. Uh, uh, old person maybe i i am an old I, I when i moved i stopped getting it delivered but i do have a subscription to the ajc that i use regularly yes, so. subscribe to local journalism it's it i i strongly endorse that i don't i don't even work there and i and i still and i still strongly endorse that so tell yep. tell uh tell viv that i said on my podcast people should be paying for the ajc he'll, he'll be very i happy will i'll make uh, sure to text right. that to him right now <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you lauren for being here i appreciate it we'll do this again sometime uh yes. stay stay uh stay up you know it's a long season for you you're traveling everywhere you know just hang in there it's gonna be it'll a long be season. fine it's, it's gonna long. be a fun season when you have a number one pick all right well thank you lauren as everybody else please subscribe to this podcast wherever you find podcasts apple spotify youtube etc and we'll see you all next time